Um, if you've liked it, please like it <laughs> and subscribe uh, to see the next episode, which is going to be... is the A to Z of crafting. And so far I have done A for always knitting, B for books, C for confidence in crafting, and D for designers, so my favourite pattern designers. This episode is E for electronics versus paper. So I'm going to be talking quite a lot about cross stitch. I feel like cross stitch um, paper designing patterns or digitally designing patterns, I feel like there's quite a lot to talk about there. Um, I'm also going to be talking about how to keep track of your knitting and crochet patterns, how to organise them, um, and what I prefer. Uh, I just want to start off by saying I am quite old fashioned. <laughs> I know I've got a YouTube channel and things, but I am learning a lot about technology as I'm doing this uh, YouTube. <laughs> um, I think I like paper because of my background, like I love art. So I've always kind of been paper over anything basically. Um, and like crafting is quite old fashioned and I'm not sure if technology works with it all the time. Um, so yeah, gonna get into a bit of, bit of everything really. Um, if you're new here, please subscribe to see the next episode, which will be next Monday. And that is F for favorite projects. So favorite projects that I've made and projects that I want to make. Um, and if you've been here for a while, thank you again for watching and welcome. Uh, so yeah, let's just get into it. <laughs> but first, tea. So Naomi, do you prefer paper or technology? Paper. <laughs> this is my YouTube notepad. Um, so it's all my ideas for the podcast. And then I've got a separate notepad for general YouTube ideas. And then I'm currently painting a little doodle every day. So like a little diary, I guess, on paper, obviously. Um, I keep seeing so many iPad drawings and I do have an iPad, but I just can't get behind iPad drawing at all. Like I'm proper old fashioned. Um, this is um, a series of unfortunate events, like a notepad. So it's got like the little doodles from the books and little quotes from the books as well. Um, I know it's a children's series, but I really love like a series of unfortunate events and I do have the hardback collection and I think I'm going to read that because I've been in a reading block. Um, currently reading Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So <laughs> I'm, I'm promoted to teenage books now. <laughs> uh, that was a bit random. Anyway, also paper sounds nice when you turn a page and in terms of reading, no Kindle it is allowed in my house. Paper, books. So talking about paper, uh, when I first got into cross stitch, I cross stitched as a child, uh, my mum taught me, but I picked it up back in like 2017, 18. And when I was coming to design my own patterns like text and little drawings, I didn't really know how cross stitch worked. And I was using paper to um, design my designs, even if it was like a simple heart, I wasn't sure how it worked. And I was wasting a lot of time like drawing and drawing and drawing and drawing the wrong thing. So I was browsing through Twitter one day and I saw an animal crossing. Um, <laughs> I saw an animal crossing design and I was like, that looks like cross stitch. So I started using that for my uh, cross stitch. So it's acpatterns.com and it is basically cross stitch. Um, so it has all the colors, all the separate squares. Well, uh, for cross stitch design, it's much better to do digital digitally because you might want to move like a bit of text like one square across and to do that by hand is going to take forever and also erasing um wrong projects so it's much easier on digital so i do prefer digital for cross stitch i used animal crossing for a while and then i found stitchfiddle.com so that's a more advanced version of animal crossing and it actually is for cross stitch <laughs> So you go onto the website and it has some options and it says choose craft. So you can choose crochet, cross stitch, knitting and quilting. Um, I don't know what the quilting was for, but I guess that's for, I don't know. <laughs> you get to pick your projects, your craft. You get to pick the size of the project you want. You can choose from an empty chart, upload a picture, or you can also cre create a QR code. And that's a free website. So those are my pat like websites for drawing. Yeah, I definitely prefer digital for cross stitch because for text especially 
um, and I do have some really good websites for text. These are also, they're all free. So the first one is stitchpoint.com and that gives you six choices of fonts in capitals or lowercase. You click the letters to design, so you don't type, you click the letters to design. And then you can choose to print or take a screenshot or take a picture on your phone and use your phone. Um, I've got an iPhone, so sometimes if I'm just doing like one word, for example, I won't waste paper. So I'll just take a picture and use the iPhone Notes app and get the pen and just uh, draw across where I'm, what I've currently done. And this next one is crossstitch.com slash caption marker slash text. This also has a ton of uh, digital free patterns that you might want as well. And this one has 39 choices of font. Um, you type the text in. So the last one was clicking. This one you type your text in. And this one you view preview to print. And yeah, so it's the same thing. You can choose to print or take a picture. It depends what honestly what works for you. And for cross stitch now, I use pcstitch.com. Now that is paid for. And I bought that because I kind of felt like I wasn't getting enough from these free websites but obviously it's it's a learning process isn't it you use free things to see if you like what you're doing or just you might you don't want to spend money on something you're not going to use but I was using cross stitch design like websites a lot and I wanted to incorporate drawings into text whereas these two were like te the, te the websites were text and images differently um so that's the reason I bought pcstitch.com and I keep saying .com it's just PC Stitch. And my mum recommended that because she uses it and she's done so many uh, cross-stitch designs, like so many. Like growing up as a child, she was doing them and then she's still doing them now. And um, if you're watching this mum, which obviously you are, you need to get your cross-stitch patterns out of that poly bag and frame them. <laughs> I also need to do the same, to be honest. Um, but sometimes I, I've, I've obviously got my PC stitch, but I do like using the free one still just for like ease. If I'm just using like one word, for example, there's no point going into a program and doing that. So I just go on the website, type it in, print it out and bam, it's done. <laughs> so next up, I'm going to talk about knitting. And up until a few months ago, I was just using technology for knitting and the same for crochet. I was not using any paper at all, unless it was from a book. So I would have a pattern, I would print screen it, I would put it onto my uh, iPhone notes and I would put the pen across when I completed a row. And then I would print, I would finish that part, then print screen the next part and do the same thing. And if you've got a project that's like four pages long of knitting patterns, I find that I wasn't knitting as many things because of that because I I missed a row sometimes because I print screened below the row so there was a lot of confusion doing it that way also it was really really overwhelming I would want to make something that was maybe quite a complex pattern and I wouldn't because I'm like how am I going to keep track of that on my phone um so yeah I was just kind of I wasn't being very productive I think um but I went to mum's house in November and um she was like, oh, I've got a roll of, of, ink, of ink. Do you want to print your patterns off? Um, so I was like, okay. She was thinking maybe I'll print off like 10. <laughs> I printed off my entire knitting and crochet library. So that's from Ravelry, Lovecrafts, Paintbox, like all my library printed off. <laughs> and she has a colour printer. So like... I, I really enjoyed doing it. Obviously, it took a lot of time and organisation, like making sure you didn't, you had the right numbers and you put them together, stapled them together properly. But I really enjoyed that. Like, I kind of love organising. I'm a bit, bit, bit of a nerd about that. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed doing that. Um, so we were letting it, letting it print, watching the true crime documentary downstairs while the, all my patterns are printing off. And it was like heaven. Um, I'll show you because it's kind of hilarious. Kind of, it is hilarious. <laughs> this is my library. I think I need to split it into two different folders. I could proper work out with this. It is very, very heavy. Yeah, I think I'm going to split it into two different folders so it's a bit easier to look through. It's like crazy. So another thing about technology versus paper, before I printed these off, um, I would go on Ravelry or any like knitting website of crafts and I would just heart things, add to my list, add to my list, heart, 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 add to my library or whatever. And I would never do them. I would go to my library and be just to have one because it's just like what is what are all these patterns in here and you've got to click on the pattern download the pattern see what yarn you need close that window buy the yarn and then forget what yarn you need so you open the window again 
and it just felt I just didn't like it so I'm really happy that I got to print mum I'm really happy I got to use mum's printer like ridiculously <laughs> but she still had tons left and now I've got a laser printer so there is no problem at all like no overwhelming problem no confusion I just find a pattern I'm rather print it off and that's it done um and yeah life is a lot simpler I'm more productive and if I'm stuck on a project of what to do I just have a nice flick through my folder and it's just a nice experience and I feel like knitting and crochet cross stitch all that sewing quilting it's supposed to be a nice experience apart from sewing on a sewing machine. Sewing is the most stressful hobby, I'm telling you. <laughs> You've got to be in the right mindset to do sewing on a sewing machine. Like crochet knitting, you just sit down and same across it, just sit down, you're tired, you can still do it. With sewing, you need to be awake, alert on it. Um, yeah, sewing is very tiring <laughs> and stressful, but I still love it. <laughs> Another nice thing about using paper over your phone to tr keep track of your patterns is that sometimes you just want to put your phone on moon or put it in another room or even turn it off. Like s nowadays, like phones are just here all the time. And if you're a crafter, it's nice to have something that's away from your phone. Um, so for me personally, if I'm waiting for a train or a bus or I'm in a waiting room, I have my knitting or crochet with me. Like I get really, really bored on my phone. I don't know what to do. <laughs> like I look at it for like two minutes and be like, all right, what do I do now? <laughs> um, but I do use the Alpaca app. So that's the Ravelry app. I do use that like Facebook. So I go on every day, like a few times a day and just have a little scroll through uh, and yeah, because it's nice. I use Alpaca as Facebook, so I use I use the app more than any like social media app. Um, and I do have a lot of things and add them to my library. But now I know if I really, really love it and want to make it, I'm just going to print it off straight away. Whereas before I would have, before I printed all my patterns off, I would just heart it and forget about it. And obviously not want to look through my giant library. Um and since printing off my patterns paper, paperly, and since printing my patterns off onto paper, I found I'm thinking more about what I'm like adding to my favourites and library. So I'm thinking, are you really going to make that? Do you want to? I'm really, really thinking about what I'm adding to my library. Um, because I think as a, as a crafter, you, you're constantly thinking of ideas, like you're never not thinking of what to do next. There's not enough like years in the world not enough time in the world to do everything you want you know you're gonna die someday <laughs> like whether you're 80 or like 35 you're gonna die so you know you're never gonna finish all the projects you want to so you <laughs> morbid Naomi <laughs> but yeah so you're not gonna have all the time in the world so you've got to do things you actually want to do and like look back and think yes <laughs> that was time well spent like you're on a deathbed at 35 and you're like, oh, what a waste of my life, crocheting things I didn't want to. Like, <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> I honestly, that, that was not scripted. I just talked about death for no reason at all. Yeah, I'm really, really enjoying my current situation with the paper and everything. And another thing, another thing about the paper versus technology um, after I came back from mum's house, I sorted out my, my stash and I used paper to organise it. So I would look at the yarn and then obviously I have my library printed off. So I look for my library and I'm like, oh, I can make that with that yarn. So I get a sticky note and I would just write what project I was wanting to make. And then I would pop it in the potty pocket along with the yarn and I would look at my yarn and be like, oh, I can make that. So that's another thing. Um, lists are good. I use lists a lot, but I think for something uh, visual and very hands-on, it's good to have a hands-on way of organising it. Um, so you might have a list on your phone of things you want to make, but how often do you look at that list? Um, so a, a notebook, actual notebook for what for this one project, like a crochet or knitting notebook, or like what I've done with the sticky notes and the yarn. Um, I do feel like it's a much more productive way 
of working out what you want to do, what you don't want to do, not feeling overwhelmed at looking at too many things. Because because when you're making a project anyway, you're already thinking in the back of your head, what can I make next? And having a digital list that, you, that just is too long it makes you feel more, like stressed about it. But maybe that's just me. I'm not sure. I don't know. Do you, what, what do you think? Well, how are you with like, are you as crazy as me? <laughs> Let me know. As well as loving notebooks, like paper notebooks, I am obviously sticky notes I've mentioned just now. <laughs> God. <laughs> sticky notes. Ah, good. <laughs> no, I use sticky notes a lot and I want to talk about it with you guys because I think if you don't use them, like you need to and it's going to help you understand knitting patterns and how to keep track of them. So I'll have a knitting pattern or crochet pattern and I'll do a row and I'll move the sticky note down to the next row. So then I'm on row two. So I complete row two, put the sticky note down to row three. Once I have complete row three, I move the sticky note down to row four and so on. And it, it's also really handy when it says like for rows 19 to 30, use stuck in a stitch. So on the sticky note, you write, obviously you're on row 19, so you're going to write row 19. So it's a really good way of keeping track of your pattern and how many rows you're on. Because if, especially if it's like 19 to 30, if you start, if you start do, doing a tally of one, you know, you're not going to, you're going to confuse. So start with row 19 because you've tracked your way down, down, down to 19 and you're still tracking, but you're using a pen or a pencil to track what row you're on using the sticky note. And then once you've completed row 19 to 30, you move on to row 31, which is the next part of the pattern. And you've kept track of every single row. I'm not sure if that's good advice or not, but with knitting, I can't count the rows at all. Even if it's like four rows, I just kind of like get a bit confused. So that's why I, I keep track. And I think even if I could keep track of the rows I'm on, it's always good to have sticky notes because you don't want to waste time counting your, your knitting rows, especially if it's like 50 rows. It's just easier to get your pen, tally it off and go to the next row, I think anyway. Um, yeah. And obviously, going back to cross stitch, I obviously have cross stitch books that I use a little, a little sometimes. By person, I use the the PC Stitch more, but I do have books that I refer to every now and then because I have nice designs in. And I discovered doing that, um, how to keep track is to put tracing paper over the pattern in the book, and then you get a pen or a pencil or a highlighter, and you just like mark off the the stitches you've done whichever way you're doing it down across you just put mark off mark off mark off the stitches that you've done and that is a really good way of keeping the pattern the same and you get rid of the tracing paper after and you saw it and you keep got the original pattern still and that's the same if you're printing off a cross stitch pattern you might not want to mark off on the actual paper even though it's an easy print like a word, one word it's still good to mark off each stitch so yeah tracing paper for cross stitch patterns another thing I've just realised this podcast episode is called Technology Versus Paper and it's obvious paper's winning, isn't it? <laughs> because another great thing about paper, it's all in one place. <laughs> so obviously that's just good. It's just like so much more organised and having so many like bookmarks from your like internet browsing, like random files in your computer. Paper is just all in one place. You've got a cross-stitch folder a knitting folder, a crochet folder, and a sewing folder. And like, I don't know, that just pleases me how it's all nicely organised. Uh, some people might love being like all over the place, but me personally, everything needs to be do like ordered, 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 because if not, I just feel overwhelmed and I don't, and that's productive. So if you're new to any of these crafts, or if like you're like me, um, you're not new, but you're still kind of looking of ways to make it a bit better for yourself. I hope this advice has been really helpful. Um, and if you're new to cross stitch especially, don't waste money on PC stitch. See if you like the free ones first, because you know, they're excellent, they're excellent. They're really, really good. I just went to PC stitch because I wanted just to advance that a little bit more, but you can like cross stitch for years and years and just use the free websites that I've shown you. Um, I use PC stitch to design a wedding present for like a wedding I went to and that was just so much easier than going to the free one because I was able to put pictures and text together and it was just the just a, not ni a lot nicer for me to do that. And I bought PC Stitch because... This video is not sponsored, by the way. I just thought I'd talk about PC Stitch in case you're thinking of buying it. I bought PC Stitch because 
Um, I design a lot of cross stitch patterns. I do use like obviously some of my favorite designers, but I do like designing my own patterns and I use it a lot. Um, that's the thing about cross stitch. It's so easy to make patterns for like knitting is I can't seem to make patterns for that. It's just drawing with thread, isn't it? Which I think is why I love it so much. So I'm able to put, put my creativeness and my art history background into cross stitch because people seem to think that just writing and art is creative, but I think cross stitch, knitting, sewing, quilting, crochet, everything in the craft world is creative because even if you follow a pattern, you're still thinking what colours to put in, what fabric to put in, what thread to use. And I think I think crafting is very, very creative. So at the moment, I'm doing a watercolour painting of my day. So my favourite things in my day. It's like a yearly look back thing. It's a little journal. And last year, I was like, oh, I can cross stitch this. Um, so I was designing quite complex patterns for a daily stitch and I just couldn't keep up with it. Uh, <laughs> But it looks so nice, but it, it's like, how am I going to display this? Like 365 little, well, big designs. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm thinking with this journal that I'm doing, I can do a mixture of painting and a mixture of cross stitch because it's in a sketchbook. So I can just do a little cross stitch on a bit of fabric and stick it in. And that could just be a little random one. So I've got one that's a snow day and I could just cross stitch a lovely little snowflake. Um... I see I've got on with a, with, a, with a snow day because I'm currently catching up. I decided to do this at the end of January, so I've got January to catch up on. But that's not a problem because painting, I can paint really fast. But if that was cross stitch, I would just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> so I'm going to catch up on January and then I'm going to mix in like, I guess fibre art. So like cross stitch embroidery, which I need to practice. But this is a good, this is a good way to practice embroidery because I was going to do the big hoop. Like the, but I've seen it a lot and I was going to do that, but I'm really, really bad at embroidery. So I think in this way, I can just have a bit of fabric, embroider something and stick it in the book. So it's going to be a mixture of everything creative and I'm really looking forward to doing it. I think that's the end. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. <laughs> um, one more thing about paper, because I love paper, obviously. <laughs> I recently, well, didn't recent. Last year, I got into paper piecing. I did half a penguin and thought, oh, paper piecing is really fun. I can do this. So I got uh, a pattern about this size. And I thought, I can do this. And I haven't finished yet. And that was May. But yeah, uh, paper also comes into sewing and quilting, which is amazing. So paper piecing, you have fabric and you have a paper pattern and you cut the paper out. And you insert the fabric, you sew the fabric onto the paper and then you tear the paper away and then you've got a fabric drawing. Like, it's really, really cool, which is why I love it so much. So I think I'm going to get back into that as well, but <laughs> start small. <laughs> the worst thing about this big project that I'm doing is that it's for my boyfriend and he knows I'm making it now and he keeps saying, how is it going? I'm just like, it, 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 it's not going. <laughs> But that's what I do. I'm, I, I do something and think, oh yeah, I'm quite good at this. I can do a massive version of this. And like, that doesn't always work. <laughs> so I'm going to practice the paper piecing and maybe that can be something to put into the journal as well. Uh, yeah, I'm going to start with the penguin, I think. It, it was a penguin and I only half completed it because I was like, oh, it's easy enough. I'd go on something big now. Forget you, penguin. <laughs> so going to go back to the penguin and <laughs> just do small and start bigger and bigger and bigger so yes and this this one seems obvious about paper like sewing patterns obviously you're only gonna do them on paper so you know I don't really know what to say about sewing patterns um they're paper I don't know <laughs> um I do wonder though, if you're a sewer, do you trace your patterns that are on paper or do you cut the original pattern? Um, I trace them because I think if I change sizes or something, but then when I'm doing it, I'm like, this is, this sucks. And also I haven't actually completed a pattern yet. I tend to self-draft because I find sewing patterns really overwhelming. Why are they so confusing? And why are the instructions so confusing? I did mention previously tilling the buttons in my designers and my books. She's not confusing. She's not overwhelming. So I'm going to start with her. And just like the paper piecing, which seems obvious, you start from easy to hardest. <laughs> 
So yeah, really looking forward to sewing some clothes this year and practicing, practicing paper piecing. If you like this episode, please like. Oh God, that's so lame. <laughs> please like it and subscribe. And if you've been here for a while, thank you again for watching. And yeah, I'm really enjoying doing YouTube and talking to you guys. It's really fun and I'm loving it. Um, what are you working on and what do you prefer, technology or paper? Like, it's it's very hands-on. So I think paper's like, I like touching, I like touching things. <laughs> I, like, I like touching things. So that's why I like paper. But if you prefer, like, technology, that's fine, obviously, because everyone's got their own way of doing things. Uh, but yeah, I'd be really interested to know what you prefer. Uh, so yeah, just let me, know, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all next Monday for favourite projects. Thank you for watching um, and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Bye.